Earlier this year, Deloitte published a report on mergers and acquisitions within the insurance sector. Here with an update is Matt Hutton. He's a partner with Deloitte and Touche specializing in insurance M&As. Matt, welcome to the program. Thanks, Marisa. Glad to be here. So, Matt, what trends have emerged in insurance M&As over the past 12 months or so? Well, I mean, I think first off, if you look at it, in 2012, there were roughly 25 deals that were over $100 million, to where today, when we go through the first half of 13, we're looking at approximately eight deals. So activity has slowed slightly. Um, of the activity that we've seen here recently, it's really three main drivers. It's in the managed care space. You've had some large transformative deals in the broker space has been very active, as well as annuities have been active as well. I think the third point that's interesting there is both in the annuity space and the broker space, you have financial buyers being that main driver. And then lastly, when you look at the, the biggest insurance players in the market, they focus primarily on one, cross-border transactions, and then two, looking to increase their distribution channels and potentially even you know, the direct channels if they could go there. Have there been any surprises coming out of due diligence? I don't know that there's been surprises per se, but I mean, there's a couple things that stick out. Um, first, when you were going from, you know, 05 all the way through the financial crisis, most companies on the reserving side, the reserves were considered redundant. Over the last 12 to 18 months, it was the first time in diligence we're seeing reserves actually be deficient. So people are using that excess capital. Um, secondly, with the low interest rate environment, I think people are struggling for yield and we've seen companies go out on the risk curve as it relates to their investment portfolio and investing in alternative assets or doing some window dressing of their financial results, you know, effectively goosing operating earnings to the detriment of realized gains and losses. Um, and then, you know, third, I think what we're seeing is, especially on the public company buyers, there is a large focus on being EPS accretive day one versus just pure economics. So gap is actually driving a lot of decisions. Can you point to any common themes from these successful acquisitions? I mean, from a successful theme standpoint, I think there's really you know, four or five things that you, know, you should focus on. Is one, do they have a really um, well-articulated M&A strategy? I mean, that's gonna be part of our growth plan. We're not gonna rely solely on organic growth. M&A is our defined strategy. Um, two, have they done their homework on who in the market is likely to, to you know, be for sale and getting smarter on those companies day one and identifying you know, of the 10 potential targets, these are the top three that we should really focus on. Um, and, and given that, have they gone ahead and started to create relationships with those top three versus waiting till it comes on the market and then getting into an auction process? The deals that seem to work the best are when that relationship is founded and there's a mutual agreement between the two parties that are merging. Um, fourth, the folks that tend to be really good have a very efficient diligence process. They, they, you know, they remember the 80-20 rule and really only focus on must-haves. Then I think lastly, people are realistic as far as synergy capture and what they're really going to be able to do post-close to where they pay you know, an actual fair price. What are you looking for over the next 12 months? Well, selfishly, you know, I, I hope you know, M&A activity picks up to where you have the last half of 13 to be consistent with what we had in the last half of 12. I believe if you look at November and December of last year, there was a lot of transformative deals announced. We are seeing a lot of activity behind the scenes, a lot of people kicking the tires, just things that haven't quite you know, gone to close yet. I believe you'll see some additional outside capital you know, playing in the annuity space. I think you've had some people from the UK here recently you know, come over to the States and play in that space. And on the PNC side, I believe you know, conditions are ripe to where you're only going to go grow so much organically and to get those economies of scale, folks are you know, really going to have to merge here in the future. Matt, thanks for joining us. Great. Thank you. Matt will participate in an insurance M&A symposium being hosted by SNL in October. For more information on the symposium, visit the SNL website.